Dear colleagues, it's a pleasure to present uh, this device for the first time worldwide. Uh, I have definitely no financial interest in conducting trials and pay for our work, but that's it. And if I uh, look at what I would love to have and see is uh, a glaucoma implant that it is not dependent on blood and um, works even in scar conjunctiva. And this is for all the glaucoma cases, even the severest cases, and easy to implant. Well, is this the end? No. Um, I found a device uh, that's uh, produced by micro optics, and they are draining on the surface. And initially, I said, impossible, you're draining on the surface. This will cause endophthalmitis and a lot of other uh, difficulties which we, we don't want to see in these uh, patients at all. But the core IP in the company is that there's, this is impossible because of the flow and the um, uh, characterization and design of the internal channel designs and the surface, etc. And physically targeting for all initial IOPs, irrespective of where you start, if you are, if you are 60 or 70, or uh, only at 24, end up at 10. So this is the device, what you can see at the, with the Euro. And this is a technical drawing where you see uh, uh, this is will be the inner lumen here, and this will be the outer lumen, and it's placed uh, posterior limbar, or well, not really transcorneal, into the fibroblast rich area environment where there is a, a very fast um, healing um, uh, taking care, and the surface area, as I told you, with polymer, etc., is specifically um, um, was designed for that. I won't go into detail in all the uh, flow issues and share rates, what they calculated, etc., in order to prevent adherence of bacteria. Uh, they took 100 porcine implants and investigated it uh, within the FDA mandated bacterial challenge study, which I learned for the first time in my life, um, that uh, porcines are applied with drop bacterial growth in high doses and none of the implant plants um, develop endophthalmitis or something. This is how it histologically look like, looks like. And this is the video, very briefly, very quick, easy uh, uh, surgery. Most of my patients are, anti are under anticoagulants, and this is a uh, surgery that's completely independent on anticoagulation. Uh, so uh, breathing or something like that, which immediately uh, um, stops healing, etc., and other technologies, and I have no financial interest, would immediately mean the end of the surgery. And this is and performed under topical anesthesia, and here you can see the fine outflow. Can you help me uh, to click the next? Yeah, yeah. So what we did and conducted is the early birds uh, trial. There's also a, a small US trial. And here's the data, uh, the pure data where you see uh, the target IOP in red, the baseline what they were, and the medication the patient took. It was two and a half in mean. And this is what they were day one, and over time we have now a follow-up up to six months, in one case up to 20, uh, 12 months. And you see there was a, um, a device occlusion here, you will see later on with a pigment that was lasered away, it was a yak laser by me, and immediately uh, returned the IOP to a uh, low. And we had one single case with severe pseudo-exfoliation that clocked and that needed uh, um, uh, um, an experimentation that not needed, but we expanded. But you see, after the BFARM, the German ministry that uh, controls everything here in Germany, uh, agreed that you can continue, uh, again, excellent results. This is the clock uh, part where I performed the yak capsulotomy here, and not capsulotomy, but yak, yak uh, burning, and a uh, mini uh, shot, so to say. And here you see the follow up over the time. As you see, there's no additional conjunctivalization on uh, additional um, uh, vascularization, etc. Et uh, and here another one, another case, another case, this is the blocked case. And the, all the others uh, remain open, so post of the IOP was achieved in all eyes without any medication. No medication, thank you. So in conclusion, it's a small implant. It's really minimal basis. It can be conducted under topical anesthesia with a very promising approach. Low and acceptable risk, I would say. Safe, easy to implant. Could maybe in the US be conducted at the slit lamp, I'm not sure. Uh, with very quick recovery, no infection, well tolerated, 
patients do not feel that uh, when they bleed or something like that, but most of them, because of the uh, uh, um, anti-government drugs, now with dry, dry eye, don't have the, the symptoms of dry eye any longer. That's interesting. So thank you very much for your attention. Just to reconfirm, the basic idea is that the outflow is outside, so basically it's treating dry eye as well. Correct. When I look at your slides, some of these glass look like blood vessels have grown over. No, thanks. No, no, not, not at all. So no, thank you. And how do you verify that they are still functional? Fluorescent? Yes, yes. IOP measurement, of course. Okay, okay. Plus, plus functional tests. Okay. And photo documentation. It's video tape. Uh, do the entry chambers get no, no, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. If you uh, exert some pressure, even during surgery, you can do that and mimic that more or less. The outflow is not that much that you can really, uh, even over time, uh, decrease the IOP to that extent that the AC is shallow. It's, it's impossible. So when you have the implant in place, doesn't it really epithelialize uh, over the wound that you put in? And how does the water get through? I mean, otherwise it's a permanent cycle uh, outside. It's a permanent cycle outside. They get exactly that is what but when they be so skeptical too. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, it has been implanted in more than 50 dogs in the US who have uh, glaucoma, suffering from glaucoma with excellent results. It has just been presented by a colleague, uh, Stefan Hintler. Uh, in the US, and uh, there was excellent results. All, all eyes were exactly at the same, uh, at the correct IOP, so to say. Mm -hmm. That made me also so conservative, but as a matter of fact, there is no bacteriaization so far after six months, and in the paid 12 months patient, uh, also not. I've seen them all, and that's something I all, also suspected, but maybe because of the design, it's a little bit elevated, it's impossible. But, but interestingly, what I thought is that the patient recognize some foreign body sensation or something like that because it's placed under the, underneath the upper eyelid but this is definitely was not the case in these 15 hours so far. And another thing is uh, there's a substantial amount of implant inside the anterior chamber and having the mind side path and other issues, what do you think about anesthesia itself? Well that's something we specifically address as a, the highest tech, so to say, um, um, endothelia cell counts uh, device that measures also at different locations, including the location around the implant. And that's something we have to look at o over time, but it's a color-coded specular microscopy latest generation, and of course with the story of, of, from Alcon with the, with the Cypress and the PSLs after three years still, we definitely have to look at this with all devices. Do you have any experience with concurrent uh, heavy conjunctivitis? No, so far not. But as I said in the broth, so to say, trials with the animals where they were excessively exposed with, with uh, uh, bacteria, etc. Uh, and then by an independent board of veterinary experts, uh, they weren't able to show any ingrowth or uh, ungrowth or something like that in the implant. Interesting technology. So, let's see how it's no financial interest. Let's see how skeptical the audience is. Let's have a look. Thank you. Very good, very encouraged. 